leadership. Day four. Talking about leaders. You've got to give up something to be a great leader. You're not successful. If you say that you're a leader, you're not successful unless others are. Whether you say you're a leader or not, you are a leader. A great athlete once said that I don't want to be a role model. But too bad. You're going to be a role model whether you want to be a role model or not. You're a leader whether you want to be a leader or not. If you're leading people to compete and you're leading people to be compliant, you're a failure. If you're leading people to cooperate and you're leading people to be committed, you're giving them hope, then you're successful. Simple as it can be. June 6, 1944. The Allies landed on Normandy Beach. When they landed, Germany and Adolf Hitler had control of Europe. Somehow, some way, we had to land the Allied forces and break Hitler's stranglehold on the continent of Europe. They came up with a great game plan. They had a real diversionary tactic about attacking up the coastline at Calais. And they attacked at Normandy. They landed the Allied forces at Normandy, parachuted in, came off the beach, 100 mile an hour. Now, the question is asked, where was the guy that devised the game plan? The leader. The leader of the Allied forces was a fellow named Dwight David Eisenhower, later president. He was safe on the ship in the ocean, drinking tea, eating breakfast. The Allied forces were a bunch of 18 to 22 year old young men hit the Normandy beaches. A high number of them died that day. When they hit the beaches, they really had two choices. Turn around and get back to the ships. Stop and dig a foxhole. Try to be safe. Or they had to attack the machine gun nests that were killing them. And some young second lieutenant, 18 to 22 years old, jumped up and said, let's go. Definition of leadership? <laughs> there it is. When you jump up and say, well, let's go. I could devise the greatest game plan in the world. Not that I ever did, but I could. But it didn't matter. Once they got on the field, and one person that could never get on the field, that was on the sideline drinking the Gatorade, enjoying the game, was me. I had to have some 15 to 18 year old player that stepped in the huddle and said, well, let's go. So you had to have the positive leaders in order for us on the sideline to be successful. If you're a supervisor, and you're sending people out into the sales force or you're sending people out to get something done. You're sitting in the office, drinking coffee, enjoying the day, and they've got to be out there and they've got to say, well, let's go. When I was 18 and we were selling uh, books in Georgia, 
They taught us well. They motivated us. They taught us the sales talk. They taught us everything. But they didn't teach us to get up and go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning and call on 30 houses a day. There were three of us living together in a little trailer. And each one of us had to get up every day and say, let's go. And because of that, that company was ultra successful because they had a bunch of young second lieutenants that jumped up every day and said, let's go. You want to be a great leader? Jump up and say, let's go. And when the fire going off all around you and there's bombs everywhere, you can't hide. When, when you fumble a football, you can't say, well, that's over. That, that's the end of it. You got to jump up and say, let's go. Because there's going to be bombs going off all the time. There's going to be people firing all around you. And you, to be a great leader, you have to jump up and say, let's go. No matter what happens. No matter what's going on. Adversity, blizzards, <laughs> whatever it might be, you got to step up and say, let's go. And because you step up and say, let's go, everybody goes. And so you make everybody successful. And when you do that, you're going to be a great leader, and that's going to make you the best you that you can be.